About two years ago I uploaded this, which has went on to be one of the most watched videos on my channel. Unfortunately it's now quite out of date, I've really progressed my design since then, and I feel quite conflicted about whether I should even leave the old video up. I am for now, but this is the May 2023 design summary. This is showing off the current design. Other videos on my channel go into the development process, and I will be having more on specific details, but I think people appreciate a short video. The single best resource for this is on our C groups. There's the original thread that kicked all this off, which I will link below. There's a lot of information in there, and there's a follow-up thread which is unfortunately a bit dead. Maybe I'll try and revive it someday. And I'll link a couple of other threads just covering it as well. Just before I get to the model, two things. Firstly, I use a lot of 3D printed parts, all of which I've designed myself, and I've now started uploading them. I'll put that up on the screen. I will be gradually adding to it even if everything isn't there at the time this video goes up and I'm very open to tweaking designs or providing different dimensions. The second thing which I should have really covered previously, if you are planning on building one of these craft, you really need to think about where it's going to be running and especially how much wind you think you will encounter. For example, on a calm day on quite sticky ground, you know, tall grass, that kind of thing, you would want a very light, high-powered craft. Unfortunately, that on a windy day down a beach or somewhere else is really going to be a struggle. It's not a fault of the design. It's just the same as radio-controlled aircraft. You can't have small, light and wind-tolerant. So if I was going to be running down a beach where perhaps it's a bit smoother but I'm expecting wind, I'd definitely go for a heavier, smaller craft. For context, I will put up the specifications of my two current working models, one of which I consider light and one of which I consider heavy, and that will give you an idea. Here are some general notes on the hull construction. I'll just leave this up, take a screenshot. Just a note, the internal height that I'm using, 70mm, and that's based on my spar, my motor, propeller, call it. Definitely measure that for yourself. Don't just blindly copy what I've done. Here is a shot of the hull under construction. This is a small section of the side wall that I've built. Very simple, very minimal. So your 15mm, I call it the nominal slot width, would be when that side wall is 90 degrees to the top. That would be closing it and cutting off the air jet completely, obviously. That for open. And the plastic card strip you want it to stop just short of the bottom. I think that's slightly too long, um, but close enough, close enough. It would be theoretically better for this to be a rounded transition rather than a sharp corner, but my experience so far doesn't really make a difference at this scale. I could probably do a comparison between the two, in fact I will do at some point, but it'd be no harm in having a, a more rounded ramp round rather than just that angle, but everything that I've shown so far in all my tests I've just been using that and it's been fine. So well, this is just a quick tour. At the front I've got split flaps which, if you have the control channel spare, does give a few more options for turning. Trying to have one servo opening up, closing a flap that long is quite a tall order. I'm doing it at the back for different reasons. That's just a view at the front. 
One thing I did on my build log model, which I very much regret, is on that model the side flaps came up all the way to here, so the hinge extended and it left a gap that was very awkward to actually try and seal up. So on this one, that's a fixed piece of sidewall. It's glued in there, there's a little carbon fibre rod. I don't know how well this will show up. That keeps that in place, which gives you something that's easy to seal up there. And it's tucked in behind the flap, so it doesn't stick forward and get damaged. On the tape hinge, that's doubled up there. This gives a bit better adhesion for the tape. I've still got my receiver antenna sticking up just to keep it clear from interference of all the wiring in here, which is getting a bit out of control. Internal structure is very similar. I've not really made any changes there. There's very little to it. Stability ports on this are now circular to square. I have a few experiments planned with putting vanes in here to try and get thrust from the stability airflow. Based on past experiments, it may not be much, but the stability airflow is free. I'm going to try it. That's a view of the servo mount on the inside. The rear section uh, is very similar, just straightening veins. Obviously the main addition is the motor, which I'll get onto in a minute. But there's really not many changes. The third motor, which I call a booster motor because it doesn't fully take the place of the rear flap for propulsion, but it provides useful extra thrust when it's needed. I talked about this at great length in part 5 of my build log, but if you add a big powerful motor here, you're going to run into pitch stability problems. This is about the most thrust you can add before you're going to start needing substantial horizontal stabilizers or outboard wings or whatever. So I'll splice in some video showing the speed you're going to get with this size of model running on the lighter battery. I don't want to go off on too much of a, a tangent, but it's not as simple as just add thrust to make it go faster. You've really got to think about stability. The other big thing that's helped out is on the previous model, that was just rigid foam stuck down. So when this flap opened up for propulsion, you were losing a lot of potential thrust. So on this one, that servo pulls that rear flap open to get a much cleaner airflow out. It maximises thrust available from the flaps. And it's really something that should have been there to begin with, but you know, that's why I'm iterating these designs. Very little to see on the bottom. That's just the rear flap with the sub flap actually hinged open. Got my square ports, which may or may not be useful. As I said, similar overall design to the last one, just refined. That's just a join. The foam that I'm now using doesn't come in big enough sheets to have one sheet of it, so it's got to be glued and taped into a larger size. If you go down the route of broadly copying what I've done and having all of these control flaps and the booster motor, you will run into a problem controlling this. The basic problem is there are more controls than you have controls. So to clarify, you have one 
easily used turning input. The rudder stick is what I use. But there's three separate ways of actually turning this, and they all have different quirks and different situations in which they might be better to use separately or together. I don't consider this to be a solved problem, and I think there's a big scope for going down some sort of flight controller or gyro route, but that's really just beyond my time and resources at the moment. So I will just present my control scheme. There is an awful lot going on, and again this level of complexity isn't needed unless you're making it as complicated as I am. It could actually be worse if I put in the middle sidewall flaps, and possibly some sort of stability jet vein propulsion, or if I added split flaps to the back. The rationale behind this is summarised in the last half of my part 5 build log, but basically if I've only got one turning control, I'm subdividing the use of that stick into separate regions where, for example, the first half of the rudder stick only turns the booster motor, and then the latter half only activates the flaps. And on this one, with the split front flap, the very last bit of the rudder stick just opens those up for a little bit of extra yaw. I follow the same strategy with the rest of the controls. I'm trying to load as much as possible onto each stick without it becoming completely overwhelming. 